In FreeBSD, permissions are assigned using three types of access, read, write and execute, with the letters R, W and X being the shorthand equivalents. The number values of R, W and X are 4, 2 and 1, respectively. The order is always R, W, X, and thus to enable a file to be readable, writable and executable, it has to be worth 7. To view a directory listing that shows information about a file's permission for the owner, group and others, FreeBSD has the ls-l command. The permission of each file is 644. Each digit represents the three parts of the file's permission. The first character, the dash, tells us what the file is. It's either a regular file, a directory, a special character device, a socket or a special pseudo file device. In this particular instance, the files are regular files which could be text, audio or graphics. The next three characters, R, W and Dash, are the permissions of the owner of the file. And the next three, highlighted with the yellow bar, the R, Dash, Dash, give the group permissions for the file. And finally, the ones highlighted with blue, R, Dash, Dash, are the permissions given to everyone else regarding the file. When looking at the permissions list, a dash means the permission is turned off and therefore inaccessible. FreeBSD treats hardware devices as a file that can be opened, read and wrote to. These special devices are stored in the dev directory. Directories are also treated as files and also have the same permissions. The executable element of the directories is different from that of regular files in that it means that a user can CD into that directory and have access to those files, obviously subject to file permissions. Symbolic permissions use characters instead of number values to assign permissions. The syntax of the symbolic permissions is who, action and permission. And here are all the possible values to use. To use these file permission options you have to marry them with the chmod command. For example, to deny access to others to a file use chmod go equals file and to change more than one permission at the same time use a comma to separate each change. The following command removes the group and the world write permissions to the file and allows execute for everyone. FreeBSD also supports the use of file flags. These flags affect only file and not directories. File flags add an extra level of security to files and can be very powerful indeed. So much so that flags can be set to deny root the ability to delete a file. As an example, using the ch flag command, we will enable the undeletable flag on a file. To disable the undeletable flag, simply put a no in front of the sunlink flag. There are three more settings for a FreeBSD admin to consider. These are Set UID, Set GID and Sticky. To understand these three flags, you have to comprehend the difference between real user and effective user ID. The real user ID is simply the user ID who owns or starts the process. An effective user ID is the user ID that the process runs as. The set UID may be set by prefixing a permission with the number 4, for example chmod4755. This will give the permissions as you see on the screen. There's notice now that S is now part of the permission set, replacing the executable bit. This allows utilities which require elevated permissions to do their thing. The permission set GID behaves in the same way as set UID, but alters the group settings. When an application starts with this setting, it is granted the permissions based on the group that owns the file, not the user that started it. To set the GID permission, use chmod with a 2 in front of any trailing values, as in the example. Both the set UID and the set GID permission bits may lower system security by allowing elevated permissions. The next special permission flag 
is the sticky bit and this can strengthen the security. When the sticky bit is set in a, on a directory, it allows file deletion only by the file owner. Useful in the prevention of files being deleted in directories such as temp by non-file owners. And as previously we use the chmod command, this time with a 1 preceding the values. And if you use ls dash al forward slash pipe grep temp we can see that a t has been put at the very end of the permission set